Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the Hawaii Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. We are excited that you're here. We have a great group of colleges and presenters lined up for you this evening um, or this afternoon. So uh, thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements from me before we get started. First, your cameras and microphones are turned off, so don't worry, we can't see you or hear you. Hopefully you can see and hear us okay though. If for some reason you can't, just send us a message using the Q&A button on your Zoom toolbar and we'll be happy to help troubleshoot that with you. Speaking of the Q&A button, that is your best way to engage with our presenters this evening. So as you have questions about their colleges, feel free to drop questions in the Q&A box at any time. Now it can be during their or uh, before they present, while they're presenting, or after. We'll be monitoring those questions all throughout the session and are happy to respond as those come in. Don't forget, this is just one of many sessions being offered, so be sure to check that StriveScan's website where you signed up for any additional sessions you might be interested in, as well as all the session recordings in about a week or so. Before I turn it over to our presenter, I want to show you what our schedule looks like for this afternoon. So we are at the top right, session B5. We are going to hear from the University of Utah, St. Louis University, DigiPen Institute of Technology, Western Oregon University, St. John's College, and Whitworth University. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to the University of Utah to kick things off. All right, let me take a moment just to share my screen. And good afternoon, evening, everyone, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Moana hansen Gofe, and I'm the admissions counselor, really here to serve students and families in the beautiful state of Hawaii. Um, welcome to the University of Utah. Just a little bit about our campus. The University of Utah has two campus locations with our main campus located in Salt Lake City, Utah, a second campus located in Incheon, South Korea, with most of our students in Salt Lake City. Um, our Salt Lake City campus consists of just over 24,000 undergraduate students. In addition, we have about 8,000 graduate students. Even though we're fairly large, we have a student to faculty ratio of 17 to one, which means you'll get uh, more engagement um, with your faculty, with your professors, and also an opportunity to get to know your peers as well. Um, our average class size is about 23 students, which is pretty phenomenal considering how big our campus is. Um, you will have an opportunity to learn from also some of the top faculty out there who are experts in their field. Um, and also uh, with faculty awards over 800 kind of throughout campus based on academics and also research. Um, we are considered a research one university. Um, we um, invest a lot of resources, a lot of funding and research, which means students um, as early as their first year will have an opportunity to co conduct research in just about any major on campus. So if you're passionate about something or, or interested in coming up with the solution to a, a real world problem, you'll have an opportunity to do that at the U. Uh, the University of Utah is the most recent member of the Association of American Universities, which is an association uh, comprised of the top um, universities on the cutting edge of scholarship and research. Um, in addition, the University of Utah offers over 150 different academic programs, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, we are considered a full-fledged college city. So if you're wondering like, where is Salt Lake City? Um, our campus is located actually five minutes from downtown Salt Lake and then also hours from national parks. So if you're wanting to get really kind of access to the great outdoors, um, enjoy world-class skiing, or even just enjoy kind of a, a you know, a downtown um, kind of atmosphere, uh, the University of Utah has it all. Um, we are considered a destination city. So if you're wondering about, about like how you'll get home back to the beautiful state of Hawaii, uh, we have about a six hour, 10 minute flight directly from Salt Lake City um, with also lots of different sites accessible by, by car. University of Utah is home to over 18 colleges, which feature over 150 different academic programs. Uh, the University of Utah is known for the health sciences with the only medical school in the state of Utah. We're also known for nursing with the top midwifery program, um, along with gaming, if you're interested in entertainment, arts and engineering, um, along with um, our entrepreneurship program, which is also nationally ranked top 10. So we have lots of majors. So if you're undecided, the University of Utah could be a really great fit just because you have so many options um, at your hand. All right, I'm seeing a little bit of a delay here, apologize. Um, the University of Utah has a 
a lot of great housing options. So if you're thinking about where you might live um, at the University of Utah, one of our latest uh, buildings that we just opened is Collert Village. I'm going to go back one or two slides. Um, Collert Village um, is designated for first year students only and has themed communities. So if you're interested in the STEM fields, you're interested in doing service, you might be interested in the Honors College, there are different towers for students with different interests. So one of the latest facilities, um, our housing feature single, double, um, living spaces with um, private and also shared bathrooms as well. So we recommend that students consider living on campus for at least one year. The University of Utah also features, features over 600 different clubs and organizations um, that are based on leadership, um, culture, um, service. And so if you're looking for a way to get connected, um, it's almost impossible not to get involved. And um, we have plenty of opportunities for students coming in with different interests. Let's talk about admissions. The University of Utah uses a holistic review process. So if you're thinking about applying to the University of Utah, we look at primarily your academic performance and preparation, and we'll also take into consideration your personal achievements and characteristics. Uh, we are on the Common App. Um, our application will open for fall 2022 on August 1st um, with our early action one deadline falling on December 1st. We do require official transcripts. We are test optional. So if you are, are planning to take the ACT or, or SAT, you can certainly send those in. However, they are not required to be considered for admissions and scholarships to the University of Utah. Um, affordability is a big piece as well. And I recommend that students apply by December 1st to be fully considered for merit-based scholarships at the University of Utah. On average, we grant about $98.3 million in scholarships and grants every year. So it's really important that you apply for admissions and that you get fully considered for scholarships as well. We do offer other resources such as FAFSA. We are a WUI participating school as well. For students in Hawaii, if you are a resident and if you are admitted to the University of Utah with a 3.0 um, unweighted GPA, you will qualify for the WUI. That will allow you to pay 150% of our in-state tuition. It is renewable for up to four years. Now, if you're not interested in the WUI, if you don't qualify for the WUI, we do allow students to gain residency um, after one full year. And so this, this is uh, definitely another great option. It's a way for you to go from paying out-of-state tuition your first year um, to resident tuition permanently starting your second year. Last but not least, um, if you have any questions about the University of Utah, my contact information is right here. Again, my name is Moana and my direct line um, is listed here along with my direct email. It's been a pleasure uh, presenting to you all. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your college session. Awesome, thank you, Moana. Okay, next up, we are going to St. Louis University. Hi, everyone. I'm just getting ready, starting to share my screen. My name is Ray Ann Mena, and I am one of the admissions counselors here in the Office of Admission at St. Louis University. So thanks for being with us today. And I can't wait to share a little bit more about SLU with you. So here we go. Quick slide here with some facts and figures for you. As you can see, SLU, say, as we call ourselves, has about 8,000 undergraduate students. We are located in St. Louis, Missouri, but also have a four-year campus in Madrid, Spain. St. Louis University is considered a medium-sized Catholic Jesuit university. Um, and we are ranked as a top 50 Catholic school. We have there our main campus in St. Louis, as I mentioned, but also have a second campus in Madrid, Spain. And we are actually the second oldest Jesuit college um, and the first university west of the Mississippi. So we're a very historic place um, and have a lot of uh, history that we're, we're proud of. Um, we are considered an urban campus, but also do have a traditional campus feel. And you'll see that in some of our pictures today. Sometimes students are like, I've heard of Jesuit education. What does it mean to be a Jesuit school? Um, there are 27 Jesuit colleges and universities in the United States. You might be familiar with schools like um, Creighton University, Georgetown, Gonzaga, um, all part of the same educational network and order of Catholic priests who are really all about educating the whole person. We don't want to teach you just how to be a particular major. We want to strengthen your critical thinking skills, your strengths as leaders. And we really have a, an, uh, all about serving the community around us. 
So while most Jesuit schools, I mean, while all Jesuit schools are Catholic, we are home to all different faiths and we really live out the Jesuit mission through service to others um, in our cities and on our campuses. So can't wait to tell you more about that. But another fun fact about St. Louis University is we have over 90 different undergraduate majors for you to choose from. And all of our majors are considered direct entry. So that means if you apply um, to our nursing major, you start and you are accepted, you start right into nursing, graduate four years later, SLU is also a great place when it comes to direct entry for things like physical therapy and occupational therapy and athletic training, because these are accelerated programs that have you not only start your undergraduate studies, but have offered you um, direct admission into the graduate portion of your degree. So I always say that St. Louis University is a great place if you know what you want to be when you grow up, because we can often help you um, get directly into that major and get started and maybe get through graduate school a little bit quicker um, than usual. We are um, big uh, believers in hands-on learning. So our aerospace engineering students have a wind tunnel that they use in all of their design projects. Our school of business is conveniently located in St. Louis, Missouri, which is home to nine Fortune 500 companies um, and just have amazing internships. And our students in our school of nursing spend over 300 clinical hours before they graduate. So St. Louis University is classified as a top research institution um, by the Carnegie Foundation. And as a result, we have some really exciting things going on on our campus. In fact, the Moderna vaccine that is now being used was actually tested. We were one of the test sites on our campus for the vaccine trial. So we're very proud of our traditions there. Academically, we have a lot to offer, but we also have a lot to offer um, for you to, to for your social experience in college. We have 18 Division I sports, um, 30 interim club sports, 50 intramurals, so lots of ways to stay active. Um, all of our athletic teams play right on campus, including in our Chaffetz Arena, which is home to our basketball team and a lot of our sporting events and is also a major concert facilities. If you're not into athletics, we have over 150 student organizations on campus. They range from government and media, um, to fraternities and sororities. And we also have a campus, as I mentioned, in Madrid, Spain. So we are a very study abroad, a friendly campus. Um, so you can choose to study abroad at our campus in Madrid um, or in 45 other campus, lo campus locations around the world. So next up, I just wanna spend a couple um, minutes talking to you about the application process. It is a very simple application process. You can apply online via the Common Application or, or our own web application. You've heard that the Common Application already will open on August 1st um, of your senior year. Um, we too at St. Louis University are test optional. Um, we were this year and we will continue to be so for at least the next two years, if not longer. So you're welcome to send us test scores, but they are not necessary to complete your file. Um, so mainly we are looking uh, for a transcript. Some of our programs might require letters of recommendation, a resume. Um, of course, the essay will be part of your, your common application. So we really encourage you um, to consider St. Louis University. There is no application fee. It is free to apply. And in the chat, I will go ahead and leave your admissions counselor, Michelle Rogers, contact information. She couldn't be here with you today, so I am happy to fill in for her. Um, but I will leave her contact information as well as some more information for on ways for you to um, request information and just learn more about virtually visiting our campus as well until you can visit with us. Thank you so much for your time. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, next up we are going to DigiPen Institute of Technology. Great, thank you. I'm going to share my screen now. Make sure I give you all the right one. Okay. All right, folks, my name is Amanda Gadian, and I am presenting here from my home in Seattle, Washington. Uh, DigiPen is located here in Washington State. I'm going to share a little bit about it with you today. We are a highly specialized four-year college, so we offer bachelor's and master's degrees, and we really focus on these four areas of expertise you see here. So this is a great fit for students who want to work in interactive media and technology, our students are studying subjects like computer science, digital art and animation, game design and development, and music and sound design. Like I said, we're in the Seattle area. We're in a town called Redmond. It's actually home to Microsoft and Nintendo of America, which is really convenient for our students and our graduates. We are in pretty close proximity to Seattle. As I said, I'm presenting from my home in Seattle today um, and in a great location for getting to the great outdoors. Um, there's a lot of wonderful, beautiful hikes in this area and a lot of good spaces to visit here in Washington, the Pacific Northwest. We're also, as I said, really great for our students and our graduates. And what I mean by that is because 
our students and graduates are all looking for careers in technology and in interactive media. We're really well located for that. So I mentioned Microsoft and Nintendo of America being right in our home base um, in Redmond, but we're also in close proximity to companies like Amazon, a lot of game companies, certainly, which is actually what we're most well known for, um, is preparing students to work in the video games industry, although they certainly go into broader technology um, animation and other forms of interactive media as well. We are a relatively small school. We have about 1,100 students. So we are really a family feel at DigiPen. We have an average class size of about 20 with a student to faculty ratio of about 11 to one. And just a few stats on the school here and different awards and recognition for our school as well. Really speaking to, again, how specialized DigiPen is. The degrees that we offer fall again into kind of those four broad categories. So computer science, game design and development, digital art and animation, and music and sound design. At our campus, we have a very hands-on approach to learning. So you will still have lecture-based classes. You'll take math and composition and still have your independent assignments there. But we also add on this project-based learning class each year. And that allows our students to work with students from different disciplines, create projects like they would be expected to in the industry, which is really fun. And I'll have a little example, hopefully to show you towards the end of the presentation, but it really gives our students the practice and experience of applying the skills they're learning in the classroom in the same way they would as professionals before they get to that professional opportunity so that we can work with them on improving their skill sets and really um, working out any of the mistakes. We think mistakes are a wonderful way to learn. Um, they really are. And so our students get the chance to make them over and over and over with us um, so that by the time they graduate, they're really ready to go. A few things about admissions for us, DigiPen is rolling admissions. So we actually are still taking applications for fall 2021. SAT and ACT are optional for fall 2021 and fall 2022 applicants. And at this time, we are also accepting unofficial transcripts for evaluation. So we know that the pandemic has caused some delays in getting documentation and paperwork across. If what you have is an unofficial transcript for us to work with for now, that's completely okay. A little bit about what enrollment looks like. Again, we're still admitting for fall 2021. If you're looking at 2022, your application will open this September. And we do have a number of scholarships, some of which are new that I've listed here. And during the pandemic, we have been doing a mix of both online only for those who weren't able to come back to the Redmond area for school um, and a mix of online and in-person learning experiences as it has been considered safe in our area. Just so that you know, those subject areas all have some general application requirements, including our online application, an essay, um, your transcripts, but depending on what it is you want to study, you may have some unique requirements as well. So definitely get in touch with us and we can talk you through what your requirements will look like and any advice we have for you. We do have a number of different ways you can learn about us. In the meantime, we are open to tours, but I know that may be a little far for students from Hawaii. So don't join us online if this is your first time learning about us. It's a great resource. We have a week long series that we call a deep dive series that gets into each of those subject areas and has presentations by other staff like student life admissions and financial aid. And then we also have online information yeah. sessions and one on one opportunities to connect with us, our students and our professors. Right. I'm going to pull this slide up just at the end, but I have a little video to show you and um, that hopefully will display well here in just a moment, just to give you a little sense of our campus community and the projects our students are working on. Thank you so much. I'll put my chat in for uh, my information in the chat, um, but happy to present here with you all today. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, next up, we are going to Western Oregon University.
Nolan, I think you're muted. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry. <laughs> Aloha everyone, my name is Nolan Arasato. I am the Hawaii Admissions Counselor here at Western Oregon University. Some of you folks may know me. I do some heavy recruiting in the state of Hawaii. Oahu is my home uh, island. I am born and raised in Waianae, graduated from Waianae High School in 2012. So a proud sea rider here. And yes, I am here to tell you folks about Western Oregon University. So let's get started. So Western Oregon University, where is Western Oregon? Okay, we're obviously on the west side of Oregon. Okay, we are not located in the state of Washington because no matter how much times I have Oregon on my shirt, Oregon on my tablecloth at any college fair, I always get some parent asking me, where are we located in Washington? Okay, we are not located in Washington. I am warning you folks now, if you folks ask me this at a college fair next time, you gotta get lickings, okay? So we are located in Monmouth, Oregon, which is about 15 miles west of Salem, which is about a half an hour drive. We're about maybe an hour south of Portland. So we're pretty central to that entire west coast um, of Oregon. We're about an hour and a half from the coast, about an hour and a half from Eugene, maybe about two, three hours from, um, from Redmond or Bend, Central Oregon. So it's a pretty cool area to live in if you're someone that likes to adventure a lot. Just some general information about Western Oregon University. We are a four-year public university. Again, we're located in Monmouth, Oregon, which is about 20 minutes from Salem. Our undergraduate population is about 4,500 students. And in our freshman class, 46% uh, of that um, freshman class will be first-generation college students. So that's going to be um, super, super good, especially for a lot of my, I know a lot of my Hawaii students are first generation college students. So this uh, Western Oregon definitely um, caters to those students who identify that way, especially. 29% um, of our whole student body population will be people of color. Any student that is submitting a FAFSA to Western will get some sort of financial aid, which is really good for those students who doesn't usually get lots of financial aid when it comes to FAFSA. Um, our six most popular majors is gonna be American Sign Language, English Interpreting, Business, Criminal Justice, Education, Exercise Science, and Psychology. Um, our graduation rate in six years is 41% and our average class size here is 19. So you're seeing very similar class sizes at Western Oregon than probably you folks see currently in the state of Hawaii. Some of our admissions requirements um, that we have for you folks. So first of all, we have a free application. So it's free for everyone. We also have a rolling admissions as well here at Western. So as long as you apply before the term you wish to start, you can still get into Western. So if there's any seniors out there, we still are accepting applications for fall 21. So be sure to go in and sign up and apply. And like I said, we are offering a free application. So you do not need to turn in any required documents or any payment for that. And then we are also a test optional school. So we do not ask for the SAT or ACT scores to get accepted, but we do ask for them for um, scholarships and financial or for scholarships anyway. This year in particular, we did not ask for the SAT or ACT at all, but usually and probably in um, uh, requirements for future from now on, we probably will be adding in that SAT, ACT score for the scholarship section anyway. But at least for admissions requirements, you folks don't need to worry about that at all. February 1st is our priority deadline. So although we do have a rolling admission and you can still apply for fall 21, we do have a priority deadline of February 1st. And that's just because March 1st is our scholarship deadline. And students do need to be accepted into your uh, into Western in order for you folks to apply to any of our scholarships. So that's why we wanna make sure you have enough time to get in. Okay, so as long as you're passing with a C minus or better with the 15 core classes that we're asking for, you're pretty much good to go here at Western. Um, if you fall below that 3.0 GPA, totally fine. You can still get into Western. We're just gonna have to ask for one to three letters of recommendation, just depending on where you stand or how low you are from that 3.0 GPA, and then a personal statement as well. So once you applied, um, now what do you do, right? So for Western, we are moving forward this year with self-reported GPAs. So whatever GPA you put on your application, we can actually admit you with that um, GPA that you reflected to us. Uh, however, we will ask you for your final transcript and for any of you juniors, um, if you folks want to apply for scholarships for fall 22, we do need to have a high school official transcript on file. So I always like to tell my students, although it is self-reported, you can get accepted without the transcript, send me a transcript anyway, just so that we make sure um, we get you in for our scholarships, okay? And then if you folks also, um, you can 
ask your counselors just to email it to us at our Wolfgram email so it makes it that much easier, okay? Some of the tuition that we have here at Western, we are a WUI tuition school, just like how some of our um, other colleges that presented have offered WUI tuition to you folks. We are also a WUI tuition school. So we're giving you folks about half off of that out-of-state tuition. Um, it's going to be about 15, around 15 grand for your full first year at Western. And then we will tack on that extra 10 grand for the residence hall. So you're looking at anywhere between 25 to 27 grand for your full first year at Western. Okay. Some of our more popular majors and minors here at Western, I'm just gonna highlight just a few of them here. The first one is our ASL um, degree, our American Sign Language major. We are the only school in the state of Oregon with an American Sign Language degree. So if any of you folks would like to have American Sign Language as a full four-year bachelor's, Western's a great place to come to. We're also known for our education program here before we are called Western Oregon University. We used to be called Oregon College of Education. So we have a pretty solid teacher's program here. Okay, and then um, pre-nursing, it's not a major here at our, on our campus, but it is a popular program because we do have OHSU, the Oregon Health and Science University program on our campus. So you folks can attend OHSU and use Western as um, where you would take all your classes so you don't need to move to Portland. Okay, and then last but not least, our Wu traditions, just some of them that we have here at Western. One of them I do like to highlight is our Hawaii Club. I was a part of Hawaii Club all five years at Western, so that's always a great thing to look at for these West Coast schools if you folks are interested, okay? Once again, my name is Nolan Arasato. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and I'd love to hear from you folks. Thanks for coming and joining my presentation today. Awesome, thank you, Nolan. Okay, next up, we are going to St. John's College. Hi, everyone. My name is Randall Hollinsby. I'm from St. John's College. Yeah, no, I was getting to the slideshow. Uh, this is not my favorite medium. I much prefer meeting people one-on-one, uh, uh, -on -one. uh, but uh, I'll tell you about St. John's this, this way anyway. Uh, we are the third oldest college campus in the United States. We started in 1696 in Annapolis, Maryland. We're about 100 years older than the nation. Uh, oh, that jumped ahead, sorry. Randall, we're still not seeing your screen yet. Huh. Let's see. Let's try there we that. go. There we go. All right, I'll jump here. Uh, that's us, uh, Annapolis, Maryland, Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's jumping all over the place. I'm just going to ignore it and we'll look at this picture. Uh, the college is known for our great books program. It's the only major that we have, uh, one major for all of our students. Uh, it's all discussion classes. Uh, it is, uh, so no lecture classes at St. John's College. We're also known for the fact that we only uh, read original texts, primary texts, no textbooks at St. John's College. Uh, we are considerably smaller than uh, schools that think they are small. Uh, on each of our campuses, we have 450 students. We have a seven to one student to teacher ratio and our, uh, uh, we're roughly 50-50 uh, male, female, 20% international and 20% of our population is students of color. Uh, our average class size is 10. Uh, we are not a division one, two, or three school. We prefer uh, um, concentrating on your education. Uh, but if you're interested in sports, uh, we are uh, fencers. We row crew. We will teach you how to sail if you don't know how to sail already. We have uh, two mountains on our Santa Fe campus. 
Uh, so there's a lot of rock climbing, hiking, cycling, uh, even skiing in Santa Fe. Uh, uh, we are uh, the national uh, dominant power in croquet. Uh, we used to be an expensive private school, uh, but uh, thanks to our generous alumni, uh, a couple of years ago, we dropped our tuition from 52,000 to 35,000. And on top of that, there is still generous financial aid. Uh, what does the St. John's education prepare you for? About 20% of our students go into education, 20% into business, 10% uh, go into law. Uh, and in the last five years, uh, for example, every student uh, from St. John's who applied to law school got in. Uh, uh, and uh, almost 10% of our students go into medicine. Uh, the other 40% go into all sorts of different things because um, right now uh, you may not be ready to pick a major and feel confident about it. And um, we kind of feel that way too. So uh, uh, we are a member of the Colleges That Change Lives group. Uh, and if you want to find out more about us, feel free to visit our website, uh, or you can visit uh, Forbes.com, the Princeton Review, uh, US News and World Report, uh, and I'll put up my contact information in just a moment. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Randall. Okay. And last but certainly not least, we are going to Whitworth University with Greg. All right, good evening, everyone, or good afternoon. Is that showing up all right, the presentation? Yep, looks good. Excellent, get the stopwatch going here so I don't run over. So my name is Greg Orwig. I'm the Vice President for Admissions and Financial Aid at Whitworth University and the lucky guy who's been able to recruit students from Hawaii for the last 10 years. And I count it a blessing to be able to work with our um, students and parents from the islands. All right, we have uh, just over 2,300 traditional undergraduate students, double the number um, that we had just two decades ago, but we are uh, stabilizing our enrollment right where it is now so we can hold on to that high touch relational community that is one of the most important um, attributes of our university. We're a place where you're gonna know your professors probably on a first name basis, and more importantly, they're gonna know you. You'll never be taught by a graduate student or a TA at Whitworth. Our professors have chosen uh, to teach at Whitworth because they genuinely love teaching and mentoring students inside a class and outside a class. A few student success stats, and I'm gonna zero in on that middle one there that 97% of our graduates finish in four years or less. And in fact, we offer a four-year graduation guarantee. And that is one way that our families save um, quite a bit of money on their education compared with the larger state universities where it tends to be much harder for students to get uh, through in four years. And so our students avoid the extra tuition and fees from um, extra semesters that they don't have to take. And they also um, get right into the workforce um, in four years or less and don't have, miss out on that income from us being on the four and a half or five year plan. We have over a hundred academic majors and minors. Um, the ones highlighted in red here are the most popular ones right now. So health science, psychology, nursing, biology, business management, computer science and education. And then I highlighted in yellow, one of the um, programs that are, is gaining in popularity, which is the opportunity to design your own major. So you can work with our faculty advisors to handpick classes that align with your particular academic or career interests and uh, be well on your way. Uh, no matter what you major in at Whitworth, you'll have opportunities for experiential learning. So gaining hands-on resume building experience um, to help you get that first job out of school. 
Over half our students study abroad at Whitworth. We have a one month January term between fall and spring semester where students only take one class and that makes it really easy and affordable for students to do a study abroad experience somewhere along their four years at Whitworth. And then 80% of our students do internships or research with professors and nearly 100% do service learning. We also have tons of academic student groups like our Student Investment Club that manages over $100,000 of the university's endowment. So get great hands-on experience making investment decisions um, and then reporting to our board every year how well they've done managing the university's money. We have a very active student body, a lot of activities that are based in the residence halls. We have 10 different residence halls, each with their own traditions and events that they put on. 40 student clubs, including a very active Hawaiian club with over 100 um, Hawaiian students. We have one of the most competitive NCAA Division III athletic programs in the country with 21 varsity sports and then great programs for art, music, and theater as well. Whitworth is a Christian university. We take that part of our mission very uh, seriously. Um, however, we do not require uh, our students to be Christian. We wanna meet students wherever they are in their faith journey and challenge them to really think hard about what they believe, why they believe it, but we're not gonna tell you what you should believe. We're located in Spokane, Washington, which is the second largest city in the state. We're on the east side or the sunny dry side of the state compared to the more rainy cloudy side of the state where Seattle is. We do have four seasons, including beautiful spring and fall, and then real winters. Um, and there are amazing outdoor recreation opportunities to do uh, in and around Spokane, um, all four seasons. Whitworth is located about 15 minutes north of this beautiful downtown scene you see here in a residential area. Very safe, very beautiful 200 acre campus covered in pine trees. I am a huge believer in the value of doing campus visits before you're making such a big decision as choosing a college. And we have, um, I'm so committed actually that we offer travel grants of $300 to $450 to help students cover the travel costs of coming to do a campus visit. And any admitted senior is eligible for those travel grants. We have been able to offer in-person visits all year long, and we continue to offer those daily with all the necessary health protocols to keep our campus and our visitors safe. Then we have tons of um, virtual visits as well. Application process is super easy. We have our own online app. We take the common app, no preference, no fee for either one. We've been test optional for over 14 years and will continue to be for going forward. And we do rolling admission. So we'll give you a decision within three weeks of when you apply. Uh, we offer tons of financial aid. 100% of our students receive aid and the average for this false freshman was nearly $35,000. If you want to be added to our mailing list so we can send you information, here's the URL. And that's all from me. Awesome. Thank you, Greg. Okay, well, that wraps up our formal presentations for this afternoon. But I'm going to ask all of our presenters if you want to turn your cameras back on, unmute yourselves. We are going to, we have a few extra minutes, so we're going to do a little bit of QA here at the end. So I'm going to share my screen. The first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So take about 30 seconds or so to answer this, and we will go in the same order we started with. So we'll start with Moana. A great question. Um, I would say really kind of explore your options. Um, I think everybody has different criteria when they're looking at the different colleges and universities out there. So really kind of know what you're looking for. Are you looking for a big campus, a small campus, a public, a private? something that's more in an urban setting, setting or more of a rural setting. So and then think through kind of what, what's most important to you. That, I think that will help you really kind of narrow down your college options. All right, I think I'm next. So hi everyone, my one piece of advice would be use technology, the great technology we have today to your advantage. If you have a cell phone and you have a voicemail on that cell phone, go ahead and set it up so that 
so that colleges can leave you voicemails. Colleges still use the phone to call people. I know not everyone does, but we often leave you a message, maybe letting you know about your admissions decision or letting you know about next steps that are needed. And very often we encounter students who haven't set up their voicemails um, who, or her voicemails box are full. So we encourage you, if you, um, you are gonna use your cell phone listed on your application, go ahead and set up that voicemail box and make sure you check those messages. Same goes for email. I know um, the email isn't as popular as it once was, but colleges still use it a lot. And so we encourage students to maybe create a college specific email address, um, one that you will maybe apply with and have all of your college correspondence sent to. So it's easier to monitor, monitor and sort through and is a professional sounding um, email address. So my quick pieces of advice. Um, my piece of advice that I often give is to really not be afraid to ask questions. I talk to so many students that are like, this might be a dumb question. And the answer is always no, there's no dumb questions. Um, that's exactly what we're here for. And if you don't know what questions there are, like I did when I was looking at colleges myself years ago, um, a good question to start with is what questions do you think I should be asking? What is important for me to know? Um, if you or your family or whomever is in part of this journey with you has never done this before, let us know that. That's a great place to start. Um, that's something I wish somebody had told me. And so this is something I do my best to tell students who are looking through their higher ed process. My advice to you folks would be, um, I was a student that unless my college experience was zero dollars, I couldn't go to college. You know, I couldn't pay anything. And so my biggest advice is any colleges you apply to, if you apply to seven different colleges, apply early so you can get in early. You know, now, like I said, you can send stuff through email. Um, you don't need to actually visit the college now that there's so much things virtual or online. So you can apply early. And then with the scholarships, apply for all the school scholarships, because even if you just choose a school, if you got accepted all these scholarships for, or you got scholarships for five different colleges, now you have five different options to choose from. I made that mistake where I was like, I don't know if I'm going to this school, so I'm not really going to do much of it, but they ask for a lot of the same essays, the same questions. You can tweak your essays, so keep all your scholarship essays. That's how I was able to afford Western for five years for free. Yeah. So I guess my best advice um, would be uh, think about where you want to be after college. College, in a way, is your very first adult job. Uh, and a lot of high schools are exactly the same, and most colleges are not anything like each other. And biology at one school is not the same as biology uh, at another school or uh, uh, any subject at all. So uh, if you have a vision of where you want to be uh, after college, it will inform your uh, college choice. All right. Um, my advice is visit. Uh, there's lots of information you can get from websites and virtual visit, uh, visit options that are available now. But you can't really test whether what colleges say about themselves really is bears out with until you get on campus and see see it in person and get a feel for whether it's a place where you feel like you belong and where you can thrive. Awesome. Okay, thank you all so much for sharing. That wraps up our presentations for this afternoon. So students, thank you for joining us. I'm going to share my screen one more time. When you close this Zoom window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. If you don't mind completing that, we would really appreciate any feedback that you have. Don't forget there are more sessions being offered after this. So be sure to check that StriveScan website for any additional sessions you might be interested in, as well as all of the session recordings will be posted there within about a week. So thanks again for being here. Have a great afternoon and we will see you in the next session. Aloha everybody.